Hello and welcome to another SQL Developer migration demonstration. My name is Barry McGillan, part of the SQL Developer team, and today I'm going to show you how to capture and migrate a Teradata database using scripts and files when you don't have connected access. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to generate the files that are going to go and scrape the Teradata database for the information that you require. So the first thing we do is that we create a directory or a pick a directory where we want to actually create these files, choose the type that we want, and choose the platform. In this case, Teradata 13. We click OK, and this tells us that these three files have been created um, in the following directory. So if we zip across to our um, client machine, and we can see that we have the unload directory in this demo one. And here are our three files that are just telling us about including the driving file start.dump. So what we want to do is we want to call uh, this and we want to call this demo.zip to zip up the three files. And that demo.zip, then we would take it across to the server machine to go and move those. So if we go along to the server machine on my remote desktop here, what we can do is have a look at what is in here. So we have our demo.zip, which is already exploded here with our three files. Now, what is what we can see here is that if we do our start dump.bat and run it, it will ask us for various parameters. And if we give those parameters using username, password, and server, this will go off and it will generate the files that we need to do that. It will generate these files and create a zip file with all of those in it that we can actually move back to wherever we're going to load those. And we'll see that's going. So all of that data is getting moved across. And what we can do in the meantime is move across to our SQL developer machine. Oops. There's our dump file now. So we can move across to SQL Developer where we already have our dump file moved across. And if I go to the capture directory where I have this loaded, we can do an unzip of, of our dump. And this is where all of the files are set for each one of those, including the OCP file, which is sent back so that we can figure it out in SQL Developer. So now we want to create a new project in SQL Developer, which we can do very quickly with the Migration Wizard. So we can right-click on the project, or we can start off the Tools Migration Wizard and start that. We're going to use our default repository and connect to that. And we're going to call this project um, Offline Migration. And our output directory is going to be, uh, let's have a look for that. It's going to be slash code, oops, slash code, slash demo. Uh, let's look for it here. Slash code, slash demo. And we can create a new directory here called output. OK. We move forward to the next part, which is the capture itself. And at this point, we choose the offline method because we already have the output that we just took back from the server. Now we're going to look for that in slash code slash demo slash capture. And we can see in here that we have the teradata.ocp, which is the file that we're looking for. And we click OK on that. When we click the next screen, we should have a list of databases that are in that server. What we want to do in this case is just choose the HR schema, which is the one that we're moving across. And I just want to migrate that by itself today. And the reason for that is that we already have a HR user already in the database. And I'll explain that in a little second. Once we click on Proceed to Summary and hit Next, this will tell us the databases that we're actually going to capture. 
and we can click finish on those. Now, at this point, when we have this done, we can go back and look at the migration project itself and, uh, and right click to do a convert on that. Now, the reason why I've taken this approach to capturing first is if you do a separate capture, you can change the object names that of the new types that are actually going to be inserted into the new database um, on the convert process. And we get a new tab in the wizard when we're actually coming to look at that. So we can take a look at that when this completes. So it has updated the rows of the names. It is now generating the conversion. And we can go along to that. Now, I have already done part of this for some of the things that we can see here. So if we go to scripts, we can see that our generated has a list of files for us. Um, oops, it has a list of files. So if I do a VI on our generated, this is all the things that we need to actually create the user within the database. And on the other side, then we can also see on the data move side, we can see that we have the offline scripts here as well for moving the data as well. So here we have our onload script for unloading the data, and we also have an Oracle control script to run that on the other side. Okay, so this is already completed. It's opened up the generated file for us. And when we're ready, we can go ahead and run that script on the Oracle database that we choose. This one I'm using for um, is this generic account, which is using my system enabled account to go and create the users required for this and populating the tables for that. Now, at this case, we can go along and we can create a user for this guy now. And in fact, I can take this guy and replicate it. And I can change HRT data and HRT data. And I can see that the password here is HRT data. And everything else should be the same. I can test that. Oh, it's giving me a log on denied but never fear. I will save that, cancel it, and I will go back to my Barry account. And I will alter, alter user HRT data, identified by HR. HRT data, rename this guy in terms of the password. And now we should be good to go with our user for all of our things. And in this case, we have our schema up and running already at this particular point. Now, previously, we've already created the, the data files for these. And we can see here the files that were created. So I'm not going to spend much time on this in terms of looking through this on the client. What I'll do is just come up and I have already zipped this up into our data move.zip and I've already moved that over to our client machine or our Teradata machine. So let me clear that off and we want to come down one and go into scripts. And if I do a, an unzip, an unzip of data move. And if we go into data move offline, right down to the first layer of where there is a, oops, a script, we have our unload script and clear this again. So we have our unload script.bat, which tells us that we have a server, a user and a password as usual for the other ones. So as usual, this is our server is Teradata our username and password, our DBC, and we start spitting out the information about this on that particular point. Okay, 
so the information is getting populated at that particular point and it's all it's all done and what we can see in this if we drill into the Teradata part of this for each database that we have actually created we can see a a directory for each schema that is in there so if I go into HR for example there's a directory with all of the information there the data and the control files and things that are needed okay so once we have that done we come back up and in this particular instance I have zipped this up and copied it to our server machine and our server machine is here and I'm going to connect to him log back in and we should have our data move data on this so I'm going to unzip this on the database side and then go into the directories that we have data move offline and now we have our oracle control.sh now because we have moved from windows to oracle at this particular point i am going to do a convert on the files um, to convert them from dos to unix so i am going to do find dot minus type files and i want to exec oops dos to unix to one file and the output file and process each one of those so we're processing each one of those and everything should be fine at this point and now we can run our oracle control oh, the other thing i want to do is find dot minus type in fact we'll do it by name name star.sh and i'm going to make those executable just to make this easier ch mod plus x on the file and pass them through and so now we should be able to do oracle ctl.sh and this tells us that we need our username password and an oracle database name as well okay so let's give this a run and see what happens so our database name is hrt data our password is hrt data and our database name is o 11 g or 2 and that goes through processes all the files and what we can see is if we do a sql plus of hrt data slash hrt data at o 11 g or 2 and do select star from employees we should get some data in here great okay so that's the data in and we can go back to sql developer and look at the data tab on each of these now and that we can see that the data is actually in the tables so that's migrating data from teradata to oracle in a few short steps using only files thank you very much